from Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Interconnect 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furry and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for exclusive coverage of IBM Interconnect 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante, our next guest, Cube alum. I think she's been on every Cube we've done here at IBM in Hichusa, general manager of now Collaboration Solutions. Um, Promote it again, congratulations. <laughs> Every year you get promoted. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, great to see you. I know you've been in a Thank lot of you. meetings, you have a new Thank job. You. Give us the update, GM Collaboration Solutions. What's this about? Yep. You were turning it around and shaking the tree, you know, transforming. All of the above, all Give of the, the above. Um, so I think you guys have known, I've known you guys for years now, and uh, I've been in the data and analytics space really for the last decade, and, um, I, and I've had a fundamental belief that analytics transforms uh, decision making, but also vertical industries and roles and professions, and now I have a unique opportunity um, as now leading the collaboration unit to actually infuse analytics in the next generation of collaborative tools. So when you think about the things that every end user uses and a professional uses, they're using things like mail, they're using instant messaging, they're using persistent chat, they've got communities and wikis and blogs. It is so ripe for disruption with cognitive, so my goal is to embed and infuse analytics and cognitive in that next generation of tooling. And so what you're gonna get to see this year and next year is new set of capabilities from IBM that actually embed much more analytics cognitive within the tool set. So you got the cloud, it's yeah. a really nice accelerant for your this is a transformation. It is. Obviously the asset is analytics and then the you know the insights that come out with cognitive. So that's great. So clean sheet of paper would probably be really easy to do. But now you have you know legacy IBM. Oh you have <laughs> customers that have voice over yeah. IP, I have um, Lotus Notes. So you have a lot of and this is classic enterprise, you have pre existing conditions that can be hard to break through is data the strategic weapon? Is that the is that the the the, the, the weapon of choice or uh, catalyst of choice for you? That's a great question. So yes, I have um, Lotus Notes, Domino. Uh, we have you know a tremendous partner base that have built. Uh, let's say applications and workflows um, around various um, business forms, um, things like if you think about case management, there's a number of capabilities. The, the thing that's really exciting uh, with cloud that's very disruptive is that uh, you can start to allow different levels of communications, different levels of personal productivity, and begin to um, surface content and data wherever the user is from any device that's multimodal and economically better than probably historically was affordable. And so one of the things you're going to see more in the business and in the business unit I've got now is that we're going to actually be delivering more and more cloud first set of SaaS services, including new capabilities like persistent chat. So that's not a capability we've had historically, but that's um, a new set of services that we're going to bring to market. So you're reimagining a collaboration platform that's sort of horizontal. And, yeah, and, and that's connected to existing collaboration ecosystem uh, players as well as ISVs and application players today. So um, I expect it to be open. We're going to expose some APIs that will be easily accessible and composable. Uh, and then you're, we're want an e ecosystem of developers that are also developing new things. So for example, one of the things we're working in research are things like uh, personal bots. You know. Um, bots to actually understand calendaring, meeting, and being conscious of the social interactions and being able to do that across multiple population sets at the same time. Uh, it could be things like auto triage. Oh, you could look at the email, parse out the text, um, understand that a set of actions are required, surface relevant content in the reply note, and automatically it says this is how you should respond back to the note. I mean, even in this morning's keynote, you saw the comments around surfacing tone. Uh, you 
know, you could have indicators in a non- You're in our email. <laughs> Dave and I email back and forth. <laughs> and text. Oh. And te text. Text is the worst, especially after 9 o'clock. <laughs> so, you know, tone could also be, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm or done with you. Yeah, I'm done with you. You know, it's not just TMI. It's like, no, no, seriously, you're done. Um, but uh, using different kinds of analytics to enhance and augment the way we have conversations. But um, I, I see a real industry excitement around developing new types of um, human to machine interactions and new services that we can expose and embed in the application. So the thing that I'm really excited about the division is that you're going to get to see a lot of cognitive set of capabilities that are more, um, what I would say, ubiquitously available amongst our software tool set. So it's not a rip and replace. I mean, you have no. in the pre-existing business, you have a lot of software. First of all, in the collaboration group, there's a boatload of software. You got the socials thing, you got the, you got the Lotus and Domino, among other things, yep. unified communications. Yep. Connections, verse, yeah, a number of things. So what you're saying is you can come in and do the cognitive thing, be horizontal, but connect to this. So it's not a rip and replace reboot. Maybe some revamping here and there, but for the most part, you're going to adapt and integrate in. Yeah, that that's right. That's a good way to think Wait about it. Or not not <laughs> just adapt and integrate really? in, but um, let's think about a couple things. One is um, uh, in a mobile-first environment, if you think about mobile developments for GUIs and UI, UX, user experience, as well as in the UI itself, there are things that we can do in a very progressive way to enhance the UIs for even some our traditional applications. Um, but it still is leveraging what the infrastructure may be on the back end, so the client that have that in the implementation can actually take advantage of it, but also express maybe in a more web um, a more friendly agile, client push yeah, that allows them to kind of surface and support their end users. Now, for new clients and new white space um, areas, we're going to be entering uh, new services that, that won't necessarily have that history, but it also doesn't have the same pull or the technical kind of uh, requirements. So I want to take advantage of some of the greatness in our, um, what I would say, legacy business and base. But at the same time, what I want to do is modernize it because clients are really thinking through, um, hey, do I, do I want to access my communication collaboration tools with my teams and directories in a more progressive way? And the answer is absolutely. Okay, so you can add, yeah. add value to the existing base by making incremental improvements, the UX, UI, yeah. and then for the new stuff, you're saying it's really the data yeah, that the data is the core. A absolutely. So, Actually, presentation layer too. Yeah, the presentation layer, the way you consume and understand information, um, even our but partnership. But that's all new, right? I mean, that's it, all it would be a all new. new. Yeah. But the the thing too, if you think about like last year, we made a huge announcement in our partnership with Box, right? Transforming content in the cloud and the way we're going to reimagine the way you do workflow on top of uh, file synchronization and cloud storage um, it is reimagining things like case management and like uh, electronic discovery and, and uh, new types of industry specific uh, workflow where the relevant content is surfaced based on specific roles and you've captured the right regulations and change control management capabilities. So this is pretty much consistent with what Bob Picciano was talking about two years ago when he was really introducing the systems of engagement and he would explain, oh, systems of record, systems of engagement, yeah. now we get cognitive. So is this a layered approach? I mean, you're basically saying, okay, by connecting, you're abstracting layers on top of it. Is that kind of how you see it? Yeah, well, I don't, um, maybe I wouldn't quite say as a layer versus I really want to do is infuse analytics actually in the application. So that rather than people having, obviously, historically, I've focused on you know teams creating data science teams, cre creating analytics for greater decision making as a core competency. Now I actually want to infuse that into the tools so that the next generation of what we call cognitive solutions and, and actually tooling is going to be expressed in everyday things that we all use. So, new role. What does yes. a general manager do? I know he or she does a lot, but so what's that role like? I mean, I don't know. It's three weeks in. I can't. Come on. What do, what, what's the responsibility? Do you have R and D? I you do. Know, do I have, have um, R and D. I've got uh, so research, engineering, um, services. We also have a cloud delivery team. Uh, sales, consulting sales, um, uh, marketing, finance, legal department, all the core function. Unit. It's a complete business unit with PL responsibilities. And um, I think what's really exciting is it, it's also a business unit that 
everyone can experience, right? Because everyone experiences things like mail and, and messaging and documents and so forth. So it's something that everyone has an opinion on. There's no shortage of that. Um, uh, and, uh, and as a result of that, what I get to now think about is, okay, how do I improve and how does a team begin to improve personal productivity? So reimagining the future. And then there's an element of reality on the current business, right? Business in terms of the business operations, the clients we serve, what markets are we penetrating, how do we package and price uh, what we have, how do we transition to new areas. So it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's about new innovations and talent and culture. So from an R&D perspective, are you a, a chef picking and choosing from the best of IBM? Are you a farmer growing seedlings in the, you know, in, it's in, a little under above. hot lights? It's, it's, it's all all of the above. Um, I actually have my whole team and the research team next week. We're spending a full day in IBM's uh, Yorktown Research, which is a uh, home of Watson, um, actually to do a full review of all of our Watson capabilities that would be relevant for collaboration and uh, content and access and creation for the next generation. So that that is a deep I mean, Watson research. Is, Watson is the digital session. assistant for collaboration, it has to be. I mean, that it, makes sense. We, we have a number of ideas. I'm really excited. I, I, want, I want probably by uh, insight time, not just to be able to talk about it, but actually demonstrate so, to you. Uh, so, so a lot of that R&D is going to be on, on making those improvements to existing products. You have to do that to keep that base alive. But is, is the, the rest of it, if you will, or, or, or a big chunk of the rest of it going to be integration of all these wonderful piece parts that you can grab? Yeah, from there'll IBM? be. Um, and also new yes. invention? Yes. So so Talk there's going to be core bit. seeds that we're going to plant with research and our existing teams. And then there's integration of not only existing IBM capabilities in other divisions, but actually integration with partners in the ecosystem. Um, so I, I've already mentioned Box as one partner that we're going to do more with, um, but they won't be the only one. So I, I'm not going to be able to divulge uh, some things I'm working on behind the scenes already, but you can be uh, pretty confident with my skills and both both not only the organic investment side, but some of the activities that we've done on strategic partnerships and um, and acquisitions that we're gonna we're gonna be busy in collaborations okay, this year. Right. So <laughs> based on so the smile that, on your face, there's an M and A target list out okay. there. <laughs> so we so let's just go try to get. No, that. you know what it is. It's about like flexing the full muscles. You know, we have within our full suite at IBM. So okay, without divulging any specifics, because you can't do that, but. <laughs> You know, what's the tone of the press release that's going to be written at, at Insight? What's it going to sound like? What are some of the superlatives? And uh, what, you know what? At a high I, level, what can we imagine? I, I would say it's probably a continuation of a lot of the messages you've heard in new ways, which is um, continuing to advance around um, enabling analytics for uh, new roles, new buyers, new solutions, um, pervasive cloud data services and an open platform for innovation for all types of data. Um, you're going to see uh, more contributions and partnerships in the broader open source world. Now, in the collaboration unit, what I'd hope to have by that time frame is examples of how we've surfaced that innovation in an application setting that an end user uses, and not just you know, here are the, the analytic tools, it's actually how analytics is inherently embedded so that maybe um, the UI or the, the windows to how people are collaborating are uh, giving recommended guided decisions or navigation paths or, um, or connections. Yeah, like a really simple example today, we've actually embedded already in Verse. So Verse is our web client for mail is based on the emails that you're getting from different individuals, it already surfaces who your relationship folks are. So it will actually apply some basic elements of cognitive capability. So it's already applying some machine learning algorithms that says, oh, you tend to do more mail with Dave uh, than you might with me. And as a result, it, within your top bar pane, it actually shows pictures of Dave. And here's the graph analysis of the people that you tend to communicate with, either in terms of because your response rate, even if they don't email you a lot, your response to their emails has a higher ratio of percentage, that could be it. 
So kind of how it works in some movies or, or shows, right? When you see the way they collaborate, you say, wow, I wish the real world worked like that. Is exactly. It, is there a sci-fi uh, <laughs> example you aspire well, to? Well, you know what? Uh, this goes back to the IBM research aspect. We have some pretty amazing people. And actually, our um, Think Lab at Yorktown Research is, is completely, if you've been there, is completely wired with these large screens that you can actually interact with. And the designers, the movie set designers for or Minority Report actually helped yeah. design some of the um, okay. the application and uh, and visual tooling there. But uh, you know, some aspects are definitely um, what I would say uh, a sci-fi. But other aspects are definitely viable. Well, how about design? Uh, um, do you have designers on your team, or do you have a resource within oh, yeah. I IBM? Yeah. So I mean this is a great. Example. So the IBM collaborations business of all the business units across IBM actually has the largest design team. So I have almost a hundred designers. Wow. wow. Yeah, That's which great. a lot of people don't realize. So design is going to be first and foremost a key element because what we want to do ultimately is design for an experience. Um, historically, we've had a lot of design where it's been focused more on feature function and product or enhancements, right, or usability. Yeah, and mobile. here, it's going to be well, about mobile, simplicity. With visualization aspects of data, those kinds yeah, of things, is that what yeah. you're referring to? Well, it's going to be things like user experience, but it could also be front-end developers. It could be folks that are very knowledgeable on uh, true use. It could be research. So there's a number of elements, including visualization. How do you, yeah. how do you think about just generally, uh, again, don't, you're not going to divulge any secrets, but how do you think <laughs> about the evolution of devices? And, and we were talking about Internet of Things, and oh. how does that play into the collaboration? Oh, I think it's going to be like a huge intersection. I mean, you think about unified telephony today. You go into a conference room, there's like, you know, there's Polycom or some telephone, there's probably like a uh, screen. Uh, in the some future, telepresence that's not connected. Start the call, I'll start the <laughs> WebEx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it takes like 10, 10 minutes screen, to figure out like going. how to get something started. <laughs> Sadly, I've had some real um, experiences there, <laughs> poor experiences. So now, in the future, you can begin to say, okay, can you start whether you're in a physical space or in a virtual space, a meeting very quickly. And how do you do that in one or two steps? Well, the only way for that to actually come uh, to fruition is for us to partner with others that are in that space in a more meaningful way to co-design, right, from the very beginning, that's how key. that experience is going to be. So that's one of the areas that you're going to see Are you more not just going to resell? That's not IBM's model, is it? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so co-design. Not in my business. Yeah. <laughs> On the co-design, you got to get in early, though. These are the relationships things. So, is that kind of where you're kind of thinking yeah. about the M&A organic kind of thing, where you're well, yeah, work it's, together? it's um, you know, over the course of last year, we really forged some great partnerships, including the partnership with like Twitter and Box and the Weather Company, and the Weather Company came became an acquisition. Um, co-design starts from a shared view of how we think the market's going to evolve and taking not only our existing products to integrate, but actually reimagine if we actually could design it from the beginning together, what could we do together? And that's something that I'm really excited. So I think the intersection of um, some of the work we're going to be doing, um, we, we have potential with Apple, we have potential with Box, we have a potential with a number of partners. Twitter, I mean, Apple Twitter relationships are big. And, I, and that thing, I think that highlights the yeah. thinking around IBM right now. Apple it is, on the, it on is, and exo exogenous data, right? And GitHub, they're going to yeah. interview them shortly, the CEO couldn't make it on, but I, I got to ask you, um, kind of an organizational, I guess, personal question. Uh-oh. Is there okay. anything that, <laughs> don't worry, it's going to be good. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there anything that you carried over from your other job? Uh, you mentioned Box, oh, I know that was a deal oh, yeah, that you yeah. did. Uh, Twitter, I think you did the Twitter deal too, didn't you? I um, did, I did so all tw three. Is Twitter coming over with you, or? No, Twitter, so those are global partnerships that we have. Um, the Box one, I'll continue to um, play a significant role just because we've, it, it's at that intersection of both content and collaboration. Um, the Twitter one, we have actually the intersection with GBS plus uh, the analytics unit at large. So that'll still stay within the analytics piece, also with Watson Analytics, 
because that's a core feed into how we do things like sentiment analysis or personality insights um, and how we also feed into Watson and others. The weather company is um, actually uh, part of our overall IBM analytics unit, but is going to be a pervasive platform and set of data that's used by multiple teams to build on top. So um, my team as well, from a collaboration standpoint, like as a very simple example, you could begin to um, infuse like the APIs for weather services or forecasting insights into the collaboration tools themselves. So you don't have to swap, you know, swap windows or panes in order to go figure out relevant temperatures for a particular day or inventory over a course of time if you're working on a project that is you know, in, in the user experience itself. So the goal is to actually design the next set of collaboration tools that actually rethinks how you want to surface the right information without you having to toggle between, you know, five different screens. Big, ambitious vision, <laughs> I love uh, it. You know, all upside, right? Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for spending the time. I know you've been in, in these power meetings all, all day, um, big time executive. Um, Five years has been a while since we've been doing the Cube at IBM events. Oh, and, you know, we've since the know, beginning. We've gotten I mean, to know we've you. Been it's been fun. It's been great to know you. I got to ask you the, the the transformation of IBM itself. Over the five years that we've been having Cube conversations with you, you've seen the dots connecting. We've been seeing the dots. The world's seen the dots connecting. Is there anything that you could share with the folks out there through that journey, your journey? I know Bob as well, Papaciano and others. A lot of people were, had their nose to the grindstone on this from you know, five, six years ago, transforming Absolutely. this. And Absolutely. It's come a long way, it's playing out, it's hang, it hung together, it's executing out. Share some insight into how, your views, your learnings, anything magnified? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think a, a few things for sure. Um, so big data has been hot long before it was ever, you know, hot because BBC and Forbes and the main, you know, headlines talked about it. And that was something that IBM was really early, I would say, in some of the more advanced technology and investment areas around real-time streaming, advanced algorithms, even in Hadoop, you know, we've seen the entire market um, evolve, but in the very early stages, I mean, we've always had you kind of this. We, we did, we did get in early. Um, I think what you're seeing now, there's two dimensions, and at a high level, uh, it's IBM also coming back to its roots around we, we serve our clients. We are focused on delivering solutions. There are pieces and components of technology that we may supply, but we don't lose sight of the fact that clients expect and solutions from us that we help deliver. And the two cornerstones of our core strategy are around cloud and cognitive. And now what you're gonna see it is that it's not just a Watson solutions that are delivering cognitive, but cognitive and artificial intelligence and machine learning and advanced analytics are gonna be infused across multiple parts embedded of ideas. Embedded all throughout the product sets. It's embedded all the way down to the chip. I mean, just think about like the recent release of the you know 14 nanometer um, chip, and then you get into things like the Synapse chip that use low wattage. I mean, it's crazy. And w think about what you could do with low wattage chips on the next generation of um, voice, text, audio uh, in any mobile device. Well, then the, you know, there's going to be a new classes of ASICs that may develop. There may be new applications that are built on top of it. Um, but there's both an opportunity to play in the technology fabric, but also in the vertical transformations, the industry transformations. So IBM's not even really in their cool. stride yet. Yeah. So you're not even, in your mind, you haven't hit full stride yet. Oh, we're, we're getting there. I mean, the, the thing that's really exciting as a whole company, and you've probably seen that pivot over the course of the last two years, is the bets that we're placing on cloud and, and analytics and cognitive. I mean, that, that's yeah, come that's very clearly clear, yeah. in terms of where not only what we've talked about to the street, but quite honestly, where we put a lot of our bets in terms of our money and investments. In heat, you saw here on theCUBE, CUBE alum, five years, six years now. Uh, great to see you again. Congratulations on the new job. Uh, Thank collaboration you. software, it is the future. Open source is collaborative, content development is collaborative. You know what, I'd love to have you guys at Connect. It'll be in January next year. That might okay. be a new event. Great, I love right, it. It's been on our radar. It's on actually. our radar, connecting. So now that you're running the show, it's definitely on our radar. <laughs> it's all about <laughs> connecting with people. And that's, that's right. collaboration, that's, that's right. the future. Big data, analytics. We got our cognition on here inside the cube. We'll be back with more action after this short break.